now that we have the state-of-the-art equipment and the best way to be able to treat these patients, now we have the ability to focus all of our fundraising dollars on research. I am just learning now some of the really interesting things that are being done and where they see in 20 years from now, the ability to be able to do heart surgery without actually opening up a chest. So if you can actually imagine, every you're talking about open heart surgeries and they're looking at the future of what they can do with heart disease and have an opportunity to do this with minimal, minimal invasive surgery. So I'm getting all of the kind of the lingo on some of the medical stuff, right? But you know, there's all of the different robotic surgeries. Uh, we have one of our scientists that's working on like a spray, like honest, almost like a 3D spray um, or that's gonna be able to spray and have the adhesive to be like a bandage, you know, just based on them spray, like, so that it sprays and it heals the tissue, you know, in that sense. Uh, they're looking at 3D printers right now that they can actually print out the stent um, for that individual. Like, like, so we have one of the scientists that's working on the 3D printing aspect of it. So there's lots of different projects. Some are further along than others. Some are more of a reality than others. Um, a lot of it has to do now, especially for those that are in technology and engineering, but like apps that an app will be able to sense if the pacemaker is having issues and then be able to kind of click in and do certain things or that you'll have like a little microchip that's being inserted in your heart and that will be able to read it. And so going from a pacemaker, but down to a small chip um, that will then notify the doctor or the surgeon that there's an issue. So there's so many different projects that are underway right now. Um, some are just concepts and ideas and some of them are actually a couple years already into the, the projects. So, you know, that is where the funding is going. So when people ask the foundation, where is the money going? It is now fully centered on a lot of these research projects. And it's really understanding that these research projects really are gonna be the treatments of tomorrow. The big thing about the Heart Institute is having this bench to bedside um, attitude, right? That the, the, the surgeons, the cardiologists are working directly with the researchers. So when they're seeing issues, when they're seeing certain cases or treatments, they're they're going and, and the Heart Institute likes to work on these heart teams so that it's, it's a full team of people um, that are completely involved in each individual's care. And right now it's about getting families and, and people on board being part of these research studies. Uh, the biggest thing for us right now is to be able to get as many people into the biobank so that we have blood samples, we have heart tissue samples, we have all of these samples from these patients um, that will allow our scientists to be able to have the, the stuff to work with so that they can start to create that data. And, and having access to charts so that people know their records are being now inputted into massive registries and so that we're using artificial intelligence and big data because that really, to be honest with you, is the only way we're going to get real results is when we're inputting everything into AI. That seems to be, that's the only way we're going to save on time when you're looking at millions and millions of files. And, and, and it's allowing the patients to be part of this, that, that their information, their images, their, you know, their CT scans, that anything that's being done for them is being inputted into this big data so that it can help all of the scientists for whatever research they're working on. So that's probably one of the main topics of conversations that our surgeons or doctors or anyone needs to be able to have with the patients that are there. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of the storytelling that we do on the communication side from the Heart Institute um, and from the foundation is speaking to patients who have been part of certain things that they are now living proof of those treatments or that change in, in procedure. You know, when we talk about the robotics program, well, Dr. Ruel is one of the leading world robotic surgeons, you know, in the world, but it wasn't always like that, right? He needed to have the, the right equipment. He needed to be able to have the right studies. He needed to have all of the practice. And so there were patients that were part of, you know, seeing all of that being done. And so you look in a, you know, de a decade later, what is the result of the robotic, you know, surgeries or anything? So it still is that we have patients that we're still in communication with that were part of older studies or were the first to receive new treatments that we're still talking to. And I think if you're talking to family, they just want the best outcome for their loved one. They want to know that their, their loved one's getting in what we call the gift of time, that whatever procedure they've had, it's buying them five more years, 10 more years, you know, just more time to be with their family. All of our staff, all of our team, we've all been university students. We've all understood the, the process of you know, putting in the time to do your studies. And I think those of us who have found success have been those that have volunteered their time 
uh, look to do um, extracurricular things, um, look to be able to um, do the volunteer work. All of these things in the future will be what employers are looking at. What was the experience? What were the things you were trying to learn? Um, and while you could be incredibly brilliant and your marks could be off the charts, it's looking at the type of people who want to be there and who dedicated um, their time and their resources. And unfortunately, in the way it works, a lot of the times it's who you know and how you get into places. But a good thing, and I think what a lot of people recognize and respect is when people are putting in that time before they even get here. Or, you know, and that you, you're you showing that you've had the, um, you've done your outreach, you've gone above and beyond, uh, you've looked into different programs, you've volunteered your time, and you guys are already ahead of the game. You've Part of a club that's about doing good and raising awareness you know so i hope that you take this experience that you're doing together as a group and that's one of the key things that you have on your resume is that despite all of your studies that you took the time to learn about new things and whether it is ai or medicine or you know communications even um, and i can honestly say that and as an employer i would love to know that you know someone that i'm hiring that's coming out of school has done these things to be able to to put themselves ahead of you know ahead of the games kind of staying in that in that forward thinking is going to be a, a big asset for you in the future that's perfect so if anyone's watching this and is thinking my goodness i have you know just won the lottery and i'm really looking to be able to help out causes they can head to the ottawa foundation's website uh, you can head to the ottawa heart institute's website and on there there's a ton of information about the projects the researchers the leadership team um you know dr Masana, our ceo is one of the most uh, you know world-renowned valvular surgeons in the world like his work is remarkable you'll find all of that information uh dr ruel who does the robotics like you'll find all of that on the institute's website so that's the ottawa heart institute and then from there, you'll find the page for the foundation and there you'll be able to find opportunities to be able to be part of, of being part of the donor program. And then, of course, because you guys were in touch with Lindsay, the February is heartmonth.ca has a ton of information there as well. And that's really about encouraging groups like yours uh, to be able to come up with these community events and these fundraisers uh, and that we engage with the donors. So there's really two very big brands that are associated. You've got the Heart Institute and you have the foundation. They work hand in hand, but there's very different information coming from both sides. And I'm like an emotional storytelling person. And I love that on our stuff, we have like this patient stories and like the success stories and the gift of time. So one is scientific and one is like feel good.